For half of my entire life, I've been playing Terraria. Yeah, it came out a decade ago. Wow. And fast forward 10 years later, and it's the entire foundation of my current channel, but I still never 100% it. So today, folks, we're going to be solving a problem that should have been solved years ago. Solving world hunger? Nope. Solving the flat earth theory? Nope. We're going to 100% Terraria. Oh. 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 Why do I keep getting Oh my goodness, I'm going insane. I'm done, I'm done. I can't, I can't. This video is, of course, inspired by Gungnir's and Chippy's on 100% runs, so go check out those videos in the description. But my video is going to be a little bit different. Firstly, we're going to be doing this with a speedrun-esque approach. I'm going to try to do this as fast as possible using one character on expert mode. I'm also going to be using one main world, but also I'm going to make a side world for a few items that would otherwise take too long to find if they don't spawn in my main world. By the way, this video is sponsored by Opera GX. Now, when we first load up our main world, we're actually going to have a chance for an achievement. And to get it, we got to generate our world with a secret seed. So today, we're going to be using the Drunk Seed. It comes with higher spawn rates, both evils, and we're going to be playing on a small world. Reason being, there's going to be a very hard achievement where at the end of the game, you need to purify the entire world. So right now, the smaller, the better. All right, spawn in. All right, there we go. The Rare Realm Achievement. Now, immediately starting off, we can wipe off a few achievements from the list because they're just so easy to get that you can just get them from playing the game. It's just too easy, you know? Sometimes, ready? Another achievement. It's just too easy, brother. It's just too easy. Oh, no. So a few things I have to do off the top of my head. I know I have to craft the Zenith. I know I have to craft the Ankh Shield. And I know I have to beat every single boss. That's another achievement. That's also another achievement. So ideally to speed run right now, I'm pretty sure we need to get every single NPC. So I'm going to start by making a bunch of NPC houses in every single biome. Now, a few things we have to start planning out in our heads is the Terra Spark Boots achievement, finding the Shimmer, and the big old slimy testicle clenching 200 fishing quest achievement, the Supreme Helper Minion. Right now, my plan was to progress through the game normally, find some gear, get some Hermes boots and HP, and then perhaps do some fishing on the side, like my little side hustle. I did not do that in this video. We continued ignoring the big fish in the room and got some more basic achievements. Mine some ore, die. Survive our first night, break a heart crystal, make a grappling hook, find a fairy, but, but of course some other achievements are things that you don't really think about, like your daily bills, like this one. We're at 14 out of 15. Looking good. There's an achievement that you can get if you drink bottled water while you're drowning. When you start drowning, if you drink bottled water, you should be able to... Oop. There we go. Another achievement. Now, if you're wondering how I'm keeping track of all of my achievements and figuring out how to even get them, I'd like to welcome our sponsor, Opera GX. So while doing my 100% run, I did have Opera GX up in the background, and it's designed to be a gaming browser, meaning it uses less of your RAM and CPU while you're playing games. And if you're doing a run like this, tabbing back and forth is just so much easier if your browser wasn't hogging all of your gaming resources. What in Yo-Yo? Yep, throwing lines. Not only that, but if you accidentally X'd out your achievement guide tab, Opera GX automatically remembers what was last open and you can easily click back to it. Combine that with using less resources and you have a very silky smooth experience of going back and forth. Opera GX is also tailor-made to look absolutely banging. It comes in on night mode already on for you, but you can customize the colors to whatever you want. So I set mine to my favorite blue and purple combo. And if you're coming from Google Chrome or you were using some other browser, you can easily import your bookmarks, browsing history, and even your Google Chrome extensions. It's as easy as that. You click import and bam. Not only that, but Opera GX has mods. If you look over here, there's a bunch of things you could change in this really cool UI, including your keyboard sounds, your wallpapers, your browser sounds, and it just gives you such a much more unique experience with the browser. Some mods are even cooler than others, like the GX Boy mod. When you install it, you get all of these filled out for you, and when you go on through on your website, you'll have all of these custom sounds. And if you don't want that, let's try something else, like the Lo-Fi Chill mod, and a very aesthetically pleasing keyboard typing sound. And if you guys want to check out more mods, just click on the store, and browse on through. There's tons of customizable mods that you can just download. There's going to be a link down below in the description to download Opera GX today. So what are you waiting for? Anyway, thank you so much Opera GX for sponsoring this video. So we're about two hours in our run. And so I decided to craft myself a sweet, shiny, delectable gold pickaxe. I continued struggling on finding a very key item in my playthrough. Hermes boots of any kind. It was like trying to find the lost city of Atlantis. I cannot locate a single pair of kicks anywhere in my world. And you guys should know that this is very important. We need these for the Terra Spark boots achievement. Ooh, if you step on it, it turns it on. It's like every anime fan. Ah, oh, man, I can't find chess. I just need Dune Rider boots. Anything. Ow. Ow. Oh my God. Please be what I want. No, wait, not bad. Oh, a chest up there. Please. No. <laughs> At least we got an achievement. 
Ah! I'm just trying to get Hermes boots. I don't care about anything else. Hermes boots opens the way for everything else. Terra Spark boots. Um, I Cthulhu fight. King Slime fight. Everything in my life is determined by Hermes boots. I went back up to the surface to craft the Light Spain with the Demonite that I found as I wanted to play through the melee update for the first time. And then after that, I continued hunting for boots. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to be the crux and butter of my playthrough. If I can't get boots, we don't have a run. But luckily for us, I actually found a gold mine. Not a literal gold mine, but a gold mine of loot. <gasps> a rail 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 rail. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my god, what is all this stuff? Oh my god, it's a spider nest. We can get another achievement. Perfection. Please. Snowball cannon is good. Uh ideally we get uh the boots. Okay, 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 please. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> So right now in our run, we have the foundation for a fantastic steamroll. With access to boots, we can now power through the entire game with our finger licking kicks to every single pre-hard mode boss. But first, we need a better weapon, and so I decided to get the Blade of Grass. I used my Gravitation Potion to acquire an achievement and keep an eye out for the Star Fairy as we need to craft the MILF of all sorts, the Zenith. We made our way to the jungle and found some Feral Claws and willingly followed the location of these to farm their stingers. While farming, we violently and brutally run over a slime for another achievement, Vehicular Manslaughter, and found a Crimson Biome next door. We blow up some orbs, getting us another achievement, and picking up a gun for the arms dealer. When all of a sudden, we had a coincidental, faithful encounter. A pinky spawn. And luckily for us, at this point in the game, we had really good weapons, and so it stood no chance. This was another achievement that we put into our breast pocket, as well as progress to a future achievement, where we later on have to kill all 24 types of slime in Terraria. I, of course, then made a horrible decision and fought the Brain of Cthulhu with no preparation, and then began building some desert homes for the desert pylon. And since this also took place during nighttime, I decided to farm some lenses for the I Cthulhu spawner. Currently, with about 1-2 to two hours of playtime, we're at 22 out of 115 achievements, which is about 20% our way through. We were making steady progress, but we weren't done yet. Getting those glizzy lizzy gravitation potions were about to accelerate our speedrunning to Mach 5. Oh my god! That is so lucky! What are the chances for um, wings again? It's like ext extremely low, like you shouldn't really get them anymore. Wow, that is insane. Oh my god, and we got this Star Fury on top of that. I don't even know what to say, folks. We are kicking it now. With one of the luckiest sky chests I have ever found, giving us the acquisition of the Star Fury and Fledgling Wings, we made full head-on speed to the dungeon, which in the drunk world is under the base of a colored tree. Using the Star Fury and its ability to pierce through blocks, we were able to continue farming for the Blade of Grass at a higher rate as we were able to blast the singers off bees through the walls, giving us another achievement. We also got the Like a Boss achievement by picking up an Aya Cthulhu spawner while exploring, and after about 20 minutes of grinding, we went on home to craft one of the best pre mood swords, the Blade of Grass. After the labor of love update, the Blade of Grass has been an absolute unit at inflicting emotional damage to anyone unfortunate enough to face it. We take this grassy blade and absolutely maul the Brain of Cthulhu. Alright, the knockbacks are doing really good. Okay, there we go. First boss, Mastermind complete. Afterwards, we head on home the same night to repeat the same mauling to the Eye of Cthulhu. Let's do this. Alright, do some good damage right here. Alright, there we go. Eye of Cthulhu achievement complete. Shield of Cthulhu, that's sweet. Exactly what we wanted. Brain of Confusion instead. Are we really playing on Expert? Right now, at this point in the game, our loadout was one of the best that you can muster in pre-hard mode, and I was willing to exploit it to the absolute maximum. Since it was nighttime, let's kill another bird with another stone. I crafted a mana star for the star power achievement and had the most welcome surprise yet. A goblin army from the west. Nice. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't tell me I'm gonna die during a goblin invasion. Come on. Ah! There we go. Goblin army completed. After a quick kerfuffle with the goblin army, I went straight into the jungle to challenge the queen bee because we need to actually kill every single boss in Terraria and so we couldn't leave any stragglers behind. Also, it was going to help us a lot to have bee weapons for the wall of flesh fight. Oh my god. Why is there so many enemies still spawning? Dodgers up. Boys! Oh, yes. That took so long because we don't we just don't have a weapon. Woo! Bees knees, it's over, guys. <laughs> at this point in the game, we are not even three hours into our playthrough, and so I thought to alleviate some free time, why not go to the corruption? This is the drunk world suit, so we had both evils. So let's fight the eater of worlds. There's some bee needs for you, buddo. Putting in the work right now, baby. Almost done. Come on. Yes, sir. There we go. Eater of worlds achievement. We got the worm scarf, which is nice and dandy. With our current god given Doom Slayer loadout, it was an absolute slaughter fest. Fisher of Souls. So now we can go fishing. And, uh, wow, first try. Oop. 
a fish hook. Afterwards, we got to make the king slime spawner, kill the poor guy, ride the mount, and went straight down to hell. Oh! Oh, no, no, no! All right. I oh, my God! An obsidian rose! What? I swear to God, Chippy spent like an eternity trying to get that. I swear he had an entire session where he tried to farm that for hours and he could not get it. We were gathering achievements left and right. And with our current loadout, we went ahead and drank a water walking potion and an obsidian skin potion to fight the wall of flesh early on. No arena. And let me just say, this fight was so easy. Maybe I should have done this one with both of my hands and feet tied behind my back because the bee's knees made the wall of flesh go to his own goddamn knees. We beat it on our first try and have entered hard mode within three hours of playing, leaving the total achievement count to 37 out of 115. But the thing is, progress wasn't always going to be this fast. As we enter hard mode, there was going to be a ton of challenges that we're going to have to face. Okay. Um, demon heart. Ooh, we got a breaker blade. Kind of useless. Wait, we need a hellstone thing. We made our way to mine some demon altars to get some hard mode ores. But since we speed ran a little too hard in this game, I decided to backtrack a little and got a hellstone pickaxe. I didn't want to fish for the hard mode ores because... Well, I didn't want to fish. I then started killing the bosses that we skipped in pre-hard when including Skeletron. We ran into the dungeon for a quick achievement and also went to the snow biome to take out the deer clops, leading our total achievement count to 42. Deer clops also dropped the beautiful, the lovely, the handsome, Chester. Chester was going to be very important in our run because we can just toss everything into <laughs> We can just give him everything. Wait, Tim. We needed Tim. See you, man. Thanks for the achievement. Dude, we're, we're taking forever now, man. We're, we've been playing for like four hours, and we're only at 44. We haven't gotten a single blood moon. We haven't gotten a single slime rain. I also started connecting my pylon systems together because I was building a ton of NPC houses. Thus, I was able to go ahead and pet a slime and get an achievement for that. But before fighting any other bosses, I decided to clear up a few more achievements, and I started to make my way to the jungle to find the city of gold, the Shimmer Biome. Later that day, a party took place, giving us another achievement, and after enough dilly-dallying, I decided to make some progress on going through hard mode. And since we need to kill every single boss let's do the queen slime can't be too hard ah! anyway after the queen gloopy whoopy was dead we started working on the mechanical bosses and i also began constructing on an underground hollow mob farm typically people make complicated structures with lava and staircases i like to just make a really big hole i really wanted to farm some mimics because i wanted to get the titan glove in order to do a proper melee run and get some really good melee speed but for some reason it was really hard to get it and i spent about the next 20 hours trying to find it but shortly after we beat the destroyer bought a mini shark to clean up some more achievements and crafted hollow armor to help beat up Skeletron Prime. With progress going at a very smooth rate, things were about to finally settle down. We no longer had any more time to ignore the big fish in the room, and thus we started to spend more time on fishing. And honestly, it was more fun than I thought. I hope you know that I tried to communicate sarcasm there. In between fishing quests and waiting for the plain parable to spawn, I ended up getting the Not the Bees achievement, which requires you to shoot a bee gun with full bee armor, shivered a few items to get ingredients for the Ankh shield, and crafted the pickaxe axe to gather some vegan based ores. Along the way, we got some life fruit and the bulldozer achievement, and accidentally found out a fascinating upgrade that I was unaware of myself. Horrified bars. Wait, true Excalibur? I thought you needed the, the, the hero. Oh, oh! Um... Anyway, I wanted to make the glorified shot bow, but that was a very nice, unexpected thing to get. Now, at this point in the game, we needed to start getting ready for the end game grind of achievements. So I started building a mushroom biome for the truffle to move in. I also need shroomite for the drill containment unit, which I'll use to purify the entire world. I also started bombing a little bit of the jungle so I can have a pre-built Plantera farm arena blob. I also started working on getting another achievement, like flying a kite. There we go. Fly a kite on a windy day. I literally did that. I had a koi kite. <laughs> and also getting the Terra Spark boots. <gasps> no way. Please save me the millions of hours and I'm going to spend on fishing. I, I got really happy for a moment. I thought they were ice skates. <gasps> please. Please. Oh, please, please, please. Yeah! <laughs> I am so happy. I can throw up right now. I really can. All right, now here's another problem. I do not have water walking boots. Now, this one caused me a little bit of trouble, specifically getting water walking boots. For some reason in my world, I cannot find a single chest with water walking boots. And so I decided that it'd be best for the run to make a separate world and just go to the ocean and pick up a pair of water walking boots. This is the first instance of me using a side world for some more items. The next instance, I think we'll be getting the enchanted sword and then also getting a dead man's chest because for some reason I couldn't find mine in my world. Oh, finally, that's all. I ever wanted in my life. We're not even that fast. I'm too spoiled from Fargo. I also forgot to include these achievements, but I don't want to mess up my achievement order, so I'm just going to put them in right now. Shortly after building the mushroom biome, the truffle ended up moving in, and right after that, a planter bulb spawned, so we took it down. It can talk. Oh, truffle's here. Nice. 
Oh my god, thank god. Right after, we immediately entered the lizard temple, which, by the way, is green and so annoying. I don't know what they did to this seed, but they put the lizard temple on crack. There's just so much traps. It's green. There's lizards everywhere, and it's so tall that it's almost impossible to just speed run through. So I decided that it was time to get a very, very well-needed and deserved upgrade, the Terra Blade. We were going to need to get the broken hero sword from the solar eclipse. And for some reason, this would take an unbelievable amount of time. And you wouldn't believe it if I told you. But for me to cope with this disgusting mess of a grind, I decided to resort to the most inhumane thing possible. Fishing. Mm. Good little slave. I didn't get the achievement, but the solar eclipse was over, so it got me the achievement. Between going back and forth to the temple for some more solar tablet fragments, we were more than halfway there on the achievement count. But currently, progress was at a strong halt. Hours were flying by as we could not get the Terra Blade, as the Broken Hero Star just refused to drop. Oh my god. Okay, so basically what I figured out is Mothron spawns not here, but over on the side, because I think this part of the world is just too tall. Please give me what I'm looking for. 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 <gasps> And I got nothing. Why? I, I, I just don't get it. Why? Why? Why give me nothing? How many more? How many more of this? Please give me the Terra Blade. Please, please. It's all I ever wanted. Please, 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 please. Did they drop anything? I'm gonna kill myself. I'm actually going to kill myself. Please. Please. Fuck. But finally, after multiple solar eclipses, you wouldn't god dang believe it. The light shone on us, and the gods granted me a favor. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Wait. Yes! They nerfed it, right? No! But it's okay, it's okay. It's still really good. Can I get legendary? Agile, zealous, agile, shoddy, terrible, forceful. I'll take legendary or godly, please. Oh, this makes this so much more fun. Oh, yes. This is my first time using the Terror Blade, actually, after the buff. You know, if this world wasn't a small world, we could have done this so much faster. Like, unironically. Ironically, actually, you should be saying. And now we're gonna fight Golem, which is, for some reason, the hardest boss fight for me. I don't know why. Let's try it out. You know, I'm still taking damage. I should have made an arena. Imagine having an entire underground civilization and the way that you were going to manage to beat extinction or any type of apocalypse was a big gigantic Lego. Then again, that's the entire plot of Pacific Rim, but you know, I don't, I'm not complaining. Oh, we actually beat him. You, we are on a goddamn roll. We got the... Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, uh, uh. We got a Pixar and now we can take him home with us. That's like the first time I found one in this entire game. Nice, we got the achievement. We're at what, 70 achievements? Hell fucking yeah. As we're making headway into endgame, we're gonna take a step back to gather some more accessories and armor. I continued farming for the Titan Glove. Let's do random trivia. Will this mimic give me the... Wow. Oh, a mimic and a nymph. Cross necklace. Why do I keep getting cross necklaces? It's actually insane! As well as farming some turtle shells to ultimately make beetle armor for our melee class. I also triggered a Martian invasion, failed to get the influx waiver, still got the achievement though. Beat pig fish for some sexy achievements and did not get the fish on wings. Also cleared up the pirate invasion and started to continue to lose my mind trying to get that titan glove. Mimic, mimic, mimic. Yes. No, I didn't get what I want. Please. Dude, I'm getting every... <laughs> Item. There, there has to be a, a a reason from God Himself for this punishment that I am receiving. Another minute, please. Oh, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna Terraria Power Glove. Come on. Yeah. I also made head on progress on some more discreet achievements. Yes. All silver white fit. What is it, silver die? Yep. All right, now we take it all off. Like shooting a rainbow gun on a unicorn and building up towards unlocking every NPC. Ooh, a hollow key. That's exactly what I needed. Now, as I made my way to the dungeon, I realized that I needed to make more progress on getting the NPC's achievement, and that requires getting the golfer who is in the desert. And while doing that, I stumbled upon a few gnomes, which are very important. In order to get the heliophobia achievement, we need to expose a gnome to sunlight and freeze them in place. Come to the surface, my dear gnomes. There we go. Perfect. Oh, oh, golfer, golfer, golfer. Gimme. Nice. We need the princess to move in. Um, uh, I think that should be most of them. As we look for the hollow chest to get the rainbow gun, we got a few more achievements on the way in. Robbing the grave. Ooh, I guess. <gasps> 
Bingo. For some reason after this, I don't think I got the unicorn rainbow gun achievement until later because I, <laughs> I forgot. But after sleeping for a fishing quest, I thought now would be an appropriate time to beat the game. I'd rather get the zenith now and just backtrack and kill everything in my path when all of a sudden something pretty crazy happened in my game. Blood moon. Oh my god, this is the first blood moon. For the first time in my world, I finally got a blood moon. And on and since it was so late in the game, in one single night, I cleared every single possible blood moon achievement. Let's uh let's go fish for some uh some chum. I need to get some chum buckets right now. Chum caster, baby! One, two, three, four. Oh! Perfect! Bloody tear. We got the sanguine staff. We also got the achievement. All right, so we got 80 achievements. Now we just got to complete the blood moon. We also need to kill the groom. So the groom pops up in a, uh, you know, a uh, blood moon. Uh, I did not know that. But if you also have a graveyard biome, it might have a higher chance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of my graves and just throw them outside. Oh, there's a the groom. Nice. When the blood moon ended, we got our bloodbath achievement and made our way to the dungeon. Like I said, we're going to go do the lunar events now. We're about 80 achievements ish in and getting end game gear was going to make this run so much faster. We took out the lunatic cultist and got the slayer of world achievement, which is to defeat every single boss in Terraria. Which is weird, because I don't think we beat the Empress of Light. But we made our way through the pillars, and of course, did the solar pillar first. And with the Terra Blade... Wow, this th this was gay. I think this was the most smooth experience with the lunar events I've ever had in any playthrough. We crafted the Daybrick and went on to do the Stardust Pillar. Farming Stardust cells until we can get the Stardust Dragon Summon. And went to the jungle for a quick break in order to get the last few life roots to get our max HP. We then finished off the remaining lunar pillars and got the Star Destroyer achievement. The countdown to the final battle of Terraria. The Moon Lord was here. And this fight was so easy. The Terra Blade and the Daybreak made this fight an absolute cakewalk. And after we defeated the Moon Lord, we got the Slayer of Worlds achievement again and the Champion of Terraria. Defeat the Moon Lord and what did I just like again? Slayer of Worlds? Isn't that the boss achievement? Oh, a star rat? That is so lucky. With some of the luckiest Moon Lord drops, we now had to make way to grinding for the Zenith. But before that, with our new Moon Lord weapons, let's have some fun. I went ahead and killed the Old One's army for the Hero of Etheria achievement, did the Pumpkin Moon for the Baleful Harvest achievement, and beat the Moon Lord one more time and actually got the Meow Mirror, which is a crazy second drop. That being said, grinding for the Zenith was going to be very, very quick, as we, I believe, only need the Seedler and the Influx Waver. Oh, wait, and the Enchanted Sword. Anyway, we shimmered our Clintaminator to make the Terraformer and headed on over back at home. We then summoned all three mechanical bosses to kill them at the same time to get the Mecha Mayhem achievement. With about 90 achievements, done, we head on over to kill the queen slime to get some bath water to throw into the shimmer to summon up a slime. There's an achievement where you have to get all town NPC slimes, and I believe after this we only had one more. We went to the bottom of the world and got the rock bottom achievement, and took advantage of the rain to head over to the hollow to get the final slime to kill, which is the gelatin world tour. We also beat the Empress of Light to get the fit. Bay. A flare achievement and then farmed in the jungle until something called a mystic frog would spawn this little guy was detected by your life form analyzer and when you throw some powder on him you get a slime town npc which gives us the great slime mitosis we're getting closer and closer to doing the mega mega annoying fishing quest but until then we still had a few more achievements to kick the boots off of. and then another achievement i'm pretty sure is you have to get the cyborg so I should sell something called the quad racer yep there we go. Oh no, I'm taking so much damage. Oh, my life force is. Oh no, we're losing HP by the second. Did we do it? Nice. Boop. Torch God. We summoned up the Frost Moon, finished the event to get the Ice Cream achievement, and had about one day of Christmas season. With this, we farmed some enemies for some presents to get the Frost Legion summon item. After beating this event, you're able to get the Do You Want to Slay a Snowman achievement, but also gives you access to getting the Santa Claus NPC. And afterwards, when he moves in, you have access to every single NPC, which causes the princess to move in, which gives you the great real estate achievement, having every NPC available. On top of that, if you talk to the princess and ask about her happiness, she actually gives you the leading landlord achievement, which is to get the max happiness for any npc all right now we're speeding through the achievements but we're almost done until we got a fish so let's do a few more it was the blood moon so we went onto the jungle to farm some enemies dr bones had to spawn and after we killed him we got the archaeologist achievement and now we began searching for the enchanted sword shrine as i mentioned previously before i had to use a separate world for this because my world did not have an enchanted sword shrine it was either i make a new world and find a shrine or farm titanium crates with a two percent chance of getting it that was not happening anytime soon anyway eventually i found an enchanted sword shrine got the enchanted 
sword and went back home to put all of the zenith components in a singular chest i also wanted to get the minion achievement where you summon up nine minions at a single time so i visited the witch doctor to get an accessory and then started up the pumpkin moon one more time i wanted to get some spooky armor so i can make this armor set to summon as many minions as possible and when i got all the gear i needed i summoned up as much minions as i possibly could and got the you and what army achievement i found the martian madness event for the influx waiver and it took a while i didn't really get it the first time i had to do multiple attempts but in the meantime i got the rainbow rod which gives us the prismancer achievement and finally after doing the martian madness event for the fifth time this run i got what i needed oh it's it the zenith we have it you guys stand nothing against me baby back up that's right back yep you stand nothing against me baby all right while we're on here i can finally farm for the terrarian because i didn't want to do it without the zenith come on come on so we've got to fight the moon lord for the terrarian we're at 104 achievements we also probably need to go into a separate world for the dead man's tales slime rain uh i don't know why that didn't work because i'm pretty sure we beat the slime rain literally like already i'm pretty sure i have footage of me just destroying them afterwards i kept farming the moon lord because i needed to get the terrarian and after a few tries we were able to get it and got the sick throw achievement and unfortunately for us that is where it stops there's no more running from from this achievement now it is now time to start working for the supreme helper minion achievement. but of course not after i got the dead man tails achievement yeah i really did not want to go fishing found it let's strip our fall clothes let's take it all off oh no it's a chest what no that's stupid no that's stupid come on this has to work dude i'm not letting that if i if i don't get the achievement Oh, thank goodness. And well, I can't delay it any further. Here is the montage of me fishing for approximately 16 hours. But luckily for you, I've condensed it in three minutes. I hope you guys enjoy. Caverns down on the ground. All right, boys, I'm going to be fishing. I'm going to be here for a while. Got to get the guide fish, but nothing out of the ordinary. How many quests do we have, by the way? 23. That's not bad. Trout monkey, 25th. I'm on the edge, kill me. It's gonna take so long that I'm gonna start script writing this video now. Are you serious, bro? Can't be that bad. Can't be that bad. Can't be that bad. 39 achievements. We can get the fish finder, which gives us the PDA, which gives us the cell phone. We have that achievement done. Get a life, and after 20, no sight potions, and the terraformer to make this process a lot easier as corruption blocks. Remember one man army? How is one man army a thing in that dining room game? Was that like two primary weapons? No, that was that was overkill, mind you, and I. <laughs> I've been playing for three hours. I've been fishing for three hours and I've only done about 16 quests. I've been playing for three hours and I've done six. <gasps> oh my God, dude. You know what? I'm going to move my bed over. Move it over here. Move my bedroom down here. I don't have torches either. I'm going to put this chandelier in here. <laughs> it's so miserable in here. Dude. I put Icy Hot on my neck because I've been looking at my screen for too long. I got it in my eye, my eyes. Oh, I'm losing my head. I'm losing my vision. What's next, dude? I'm going to start losing my memory. I'm going to think I'm on the 10th quest. Oh, there we go. I have 69 done. I'm just going to start editing this thing, dude. There's no way. I can't waste this much time. Golden Ladybug. <gasps> yes. Wait, how do I make the Golden Delight? Golden Delight. Perfect though. Oh my goodness, this stinks so long. I can't believe I've been doing this for four hours straight. There has to be something that I'm missing here. Slime rain. What? This is the first slime rain I've gotten since the first one. <gasps> yes. Yes. Sticky situation. All right, back to <laughs> back to fishing quests. So I think we're at 144, maybe. 144. Yeah.
We're almost at the finish line, everyone. We are at 186. That's still pretty bad, but <laughs> compared to the 24 hours already, oh man. If I can get a Blood Moon tonight, that'd be great because I can just skip time. Oh. Oh, wait, what? What? Already? What? No fucking shot. Dude, we literally got like a blood moon and a solar eclipse. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. All right, now we have one more achievement left. Oh my God. I'm recording, right? Oh. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Dude, we had so many fishing rods. I'm so happy. Finally, with the fishing quest finally completed, it only took me 16 hours. If you guys are wondering why my voice sounds a little bit different, it's because I fell asleep while editing because looking through 16 hours of fishing wasn't fun at all. However, we're not done yet. We still have one more achievement, and that is to purify the entire world from corruption and hollowed. And well, that sounds as great as it seems. Now, I definitely could just hop into a separate world and just purify the small little corruption that they have. I think that'll be a little too easy. And so... I'm going to torture myself just a little bit more and get the achievement that the least amount of Terraria players have achieved. I hope you guys enjoy. Oh, goodbye fishing stuff. You can be put to sleep. We need to check how much of our world is being corrupted slash hollow slash whatever. And then on top of that, we need to craft a biome site potion. This is going to allow us to see what parts are not pure. 13% hollow, 9 corrupt, 22% crimson. That's insane. Biome site. We got two of these. Let's get into this. You can't let one block get through. One block gets through. Achievement is net. They're going to drop on down and just... All right, so now we got to go. Then we got to make sure to check every single sky island as well. And then after we check the islands, we got to do a run through probably horizontally. I think this might just take us one hour, honestly. Come back in, please. What? Where? <gasps> what is this? <gasps> right there. Why didn't I spray here? Oh, because of the honey that got in my way earlier oh this might be it gamers um, um let's just okay let's let's leave and then join back and if not we just go back to that little area please please yes oh yeah baby and that is all 115 achievements in terraria i hope you guys enjoyed this video it took me about 33 hours to 35 hours give or take and if you guys want to see more 100 percent like content let me know in the comments happy early christmas and i'll see you guys in the next one